Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch with some news from Autodesk, specifically Autodesk Maya 2019 and their indie version 2019 LT have both been released today. Now what is Maya? I think it's probably safe to say it is the most used production 3D software out there. Their parent company Autodesk basically bought up and sucked up every major CG application being made. So uh, 3D Studios Max, Maya, and the dearly departed Soft Image were all owned at one point in time by Autodesk. Since then, they've kept going with 3D Studios Max, which is aimed more towards game development, and Maya, which was aimed more towards film production. But truth of the matter is, it seems kind of like Maya is winning. It seems to be a little bit more popular going forward, and more and more often, studios seem to be going with Maya, where I would say, completely pulling this number out of my ass, about 60% of AAA games are made using Maya. Maya seems to have a slight edge on Max, and and truth of the matter is, in a production environment, if you are going to school to try and get a job creating art for game development, it's either Max or Maya, and probably Maya that you want to learn. So that's why this is relevant and important. So now let's jump in and take a look at what all is new in the 2019 edition of Maya. And they've done something I absolutely love with this release. And this is one of those things I know a lot of people hate subscription-based software. And Autodesk moved towards that, just like Adobe did with a lot of their products. And basically, you buy it or rent it, I guess you could say. But the nice thing with that is all of a sudden these big feature release versions to try to get you to upgrade aren't as important. So you can have a lower priority on, you know, uh, we need to have subsurface ambient occlusion, uh, God ray scattering integration with real time voxels. So you don't need those big checkbox items anymore. So you can focus on things like performance. And that's what this release is all about. It's about improving performance across the board. And I love to see that. Things like startup time, selection time, viewport rendering, animation playback time. And they're saying two to three times performance improvement in animation playback due to animation caching. And whenever anything releases with massive performance improvements, it's a win. Be it a game engine, a software, so on. I really wish more companies would actually focus on this. Instead, what they normally do is add feature, 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 because features sell, but they also introduce bloat and make the product worse and worse and worse over time. So kudos to Autodesk for focusing on performance with this particular release. Of course, that is not all this release was about. There was a number of features also added. Now, I'm not going to get into a lot of details about the LT stuff. LT is mostly the performance and the core stuff. It's the full fat version of Maya 2019 that got all of the new features. And here we are from the uh, release notes announcement. I'm only going to go through the top level stuff. They've broken it down. There are a number of improvements in each different category, such as animation, um, character animation, performance, modeling, rendering, and so on. So if you're interested in like the 400 plus improvements they've made, I, I will link the release notes. You can dig into it yourself. But we're going to look at the big top level stuff. And as I mentioned earlier, the mantra of this release was performance. So we have saw this release focus on letting you work faster than ever before with new workflows and numerous performance enhancements. We're going to see that word a lot. A myriad of improvements to Viewport 2.0, sort of like what you've seen with Blender with its EV renderer. Uh, Maya has gotten an improved uh, render or viewport rendering as well. Uh, performance when doing everything from loading scenes to selecting objects to handling dense messages at uh, meshes. Additionally, cache playback speeds up your ability to preview animations as mentioned or seen in the video earlier. That's up to a three times improvement in animation playback speeds due to that caching being drawn. Uh, redrawing only what changed uh, rather than updating the entire scene greatly improves viewport uh, playback performance, removing the need to constantly play blast your scenes. Release also includes new tools for basically figuring out why your scene is slowing down. Uh, features the evaluation toolkit, toolkit and profile allows you to pinpoint performance problems that might be slowing down your scenes. Cool thing to see there. Now again, this is just quality of life stuff. This is not a big checkbox feature and I like that. This is the kind of stuff that people using a program every single day will really directly benefit from. Uh, we also saw improvements to render setup which enables you to better organize render layers by coloring and isolating them in render setup editor or by controlling whether lights are included in each layer by default in addition more options are available for exporting and importing scene render settings and AOVs uh, you can now render Arnold Arnold is a third-party renderer that they've purchased um, Arnold right in the viewport including its render view options such as debug shading AOVs and region rendering new graph editor filters have been uh, added to help you refine animation curves quicker and easier than before and plenty of examples and presets have been added to the content browser. So 
again, the theme of the 2019 release is performance. And once again, I am really stoked about that. That is a good thing for them to focus on. Now, if you're still sticking around, you may be wondering, well, what exactly does uh, Maya cost me, you know, if you're not already familiar with the software? And this is the part that hurts. Now, as I mentioned earlier on, they have moved to a subscription-based model. So if you want the full version of Maya, you're looking at $190 a month or $1,505. Don't know why they wanted that extra five bucks, but $1,500 a year uh, for a subscription. Again, no straight out buy it options anymore. This is now um, a subscription only system. Now, if you have an old perpetual license, you see there, you can actually save money to move to a subscription model. Um, but that is a legacy thing. They don't offer that anymore. Also, if you are in the Maya LT space, it's 30 bucks a month or $245 a year or two years, you get a bit of a discount off that. Uh, three years, you get a bit more of a discount, etc. Now, one of the things that kind of sucks, a lot of the value used to be with Maya LT. Again, Maya LT is stripped down for indie game makers. It's more modeling, animation, exporting, designed for creating and exporting content out to game engines. It used to also include, and I think it technically still does include, the Stingray game engine, but unfortunately Autodesk have discontinued Stingray. And that was a huge part of the Maya LT value proposition is it actually came with a game engine at that $30 a month. And the fact that they're not offering that anymore kind of sours me a bit on Maya LT's value overall. But again, if you are not looking for the full functionality of Maya, Maya LT may be right for you. Now, one thing that Autodesk do very, very well, however, is if you are a student, you can get access to all of the Autodesk software full on licenses for something like two or three years. You basically just have to be from a valid school or a makeup made up school if you are an unethical sort. Of course, don't. there's no difference between using a student license and making commercial stuff for the if you're not a student than pirating. So, you know, I'm not recommending that. But the checks and balances on proving that you're a student are pretty low key overall. So Autodesk is very accommodating towards students. And if you are looking to get a job in the industry and you want to get hands on with these tools, if you are at a valid school, you can get uh, Max, Maya, Mudbox, various other different Autodesk uh, game development related software completely for free under a very liberal license. So that is one nice thing with Autodesk that subscription pricing and the high price tag, they hurt to a certain degree, uh, but the um, educational options out there are very, very nice. So uh, that is one thing to definitely give kudos to Autodesk over. All right, so that is it. That is the new uh, Maya 2019 release. Again, not a lot of huge, sexy new features. You know, you don't have a new sculpting mode or a new uh, polygonal modeling paradigm or anything like that. But what you do have is faster faster improvements, faster viewport, faster animation, and then refined usability. And again, kudos for them for doing this because that is exactly what I like to see in a release. Uh, let me know, are you already using Maya? Are you like me? Do you like to see them you know, focusing on performance as opposed to feature bloat? Or is there something that you were really hoping they were added at this point that they didn't? Uh, if you're not using Maya, why? Is it like that price tag insane? Are you happy with Blender? Are you not a student and don't have access to it? Do you use 3D Studios Max instead? Or have I been talking Greek the entire time to you and you got no idea what any of the stuff we were talking about here is? Let me know all that, comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.